Okay, so we're Google, so I'm using Google Slides. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, this is the first time I'm using this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if I, if I have any problem, I'm sure a lot of you here can give me tech support for it, right? <laughs> okay, hi. Um, yeah, so thanks Google for hosting this event. Now I can say I made a presentation at Google. <laughs> this is, yeah, so my name is Leon. Uh, for those of you who never met me before, I uh, kind of a maker. I do electronics, I do software, and I do designing as well. Okay, so today I'll talk to you about a project that I did called the IoT Smart Shelf. Okay, so um, what the IoT Smart Shelf does is basically it's a shelf that when I put my my stock inside, it actually can sense how much stock I have and will be able to uh, update it on the internet. Right. So how does this work? So right here, so this is, for those who don't know what I sell, it's actually uh, paper, transfer media paper, which comes in boxes like this. Okay, so one day I had this idea of, and what we were doing before that, we were always counting by hand. Okay, so <coughs> what's the idea? The idea is very simple. The box is a fixed height, right? So I built a shelf with a known height, right? And I use an ultrasonic sensor. I put it on top. So based on how many boxes there are, the sensor is able to detect uh, the height based on, because it knows the, the height of the shell. So you know how many boxes there are inside. Right, it's a very simple idea. Um, so <coughs> I think I hope you understand how it works. Right. So um, the idea is actually very simple, but to make the actual shell was actually quite challenging. And today what I'd like to share with you all is the journey that I actually went through to uh, make the shelf and all the different uh, challenges I had along the way. Okay. So <coughs> the first thing that I did was, um, yeah, so I had to make a prototype first, right? The idea was, the idea came about, but I don't know whether it really worked. So what I did was, the first thing I did was I made a prototype made out of cardboard. That's the easiest thing to do. And what I learned from the prototype is that I cannot do too many boxes, right? Because these boxes, they have, they're not really the same. They can be like maybe one or two mm different on each different box. So I found that when I hit 20 boxes and 19 boxes, depending on how it is, sometimes the 19 boxes and 20 boxes are almost the same height. So because I did the prototype, I knew that the max I could do was 10 boxes for the shelf. And that was the first thing that, so never ever jump in and make the entire shelf and you do 20 and realize that it doesn't work. So it's important that you do a prototype first and proof of concept. Okay. <coughs> then the next was, the next thing that really I had to do was uh, space constraint, the most important thing, right? Um, how, where else, where else I gonna put the shelf? So don't build a shelf and then I didn't realize that it's too big, I can't put it anywhere. And so I used Adobe Illustrator to design the shelf um, with this. So I came up with quite a number of different versions of how I do it and I, in the end I came up with a kind of a modular concept of how to do this shelf, which means that I just built one shelf and I put it one on top of the other. <coughs> okay, so, and the good thing about uh, doing it this way um, is that I'm able to figure out how much wood I need because, okay, this, this paper is actually quite heavy. Each one of these boxes is about 1 kg. Um, so one of these, like this, will be 40 kg, not including the, the, the weight of the wood. So I had to use wood and not cardboard. It could not work with cardboard, right? Okay, um, so yeah, so for those who have never seen an ultrasonic sensor, I have one here. How many of you have ever played ultrasonic sensors before? She one of the most lousy, lousiest design stuff around. Okay, it's because the, the biggest problem I had with this project was that how do I make a, this sensor stay on top of the wood? This was actually the biggest challenge I had because, okay, if you look around the internet, right, everybody used the ultrasonic sensor for one thing, that is collision avoidance. So you can find a lot of cases on Thingiverse and 3D printed stuff that will make it go this way. You don't have anything that will make it go this way. So, <coughs> in the end, what I did was I laser cut the 
a piece of acrylic so that I could put this and mount it into the into the acrylic like this and then from this acrylic I can actually then screw it onto the wood because the holes here are so small you can't actually screw this on the wood itself and the screws are actually very difficult to find I don't believe it um, the smaller the screw right the worse it is actually it's very easy to find big screws but very difficult to find small screws so I had to I only could find the screws later at Lim Lim Tower and yeah, so <coughs> had to do a bit of woodworking. Uh, so you cut a hole in the piece of wood and mount the sensors like this. Um, I found from here that cutting a hole in a piece of wood is actually a very difficult thing. You know, cutting a hole in a piece of wood that looks like square is a very difficult thing. Cutting a hole is very easy. Okay, so after cutting the hole, mounting in everything like this. <coughs> okay. <coughs> So this was actually the, the easier part. Okay. So the biggest the next biggest challenge, which I think you guys will appreciate more because you guys are more hackers, right? This is more a maker kind of a problem. Right. So each ultrasonic sensor has four pins. Okay, and uh, four pins I was put I had 14 shelves. So 14 times 4 I had 56 wires to deal with. So that was a lot um, of wires. Okay, so <coughs> some of them, like you saw the first one where I had four shelves, four boxes together. There were four sensors, and uh, so along that, I had 16 wires really that was coming out. So how did I solve this problem? Um, the good thing is that two of these is PCC and ground. So out of the 14, actually two of them are in common. Out of the 16, two of them are common, but I'm still left with eight wires because there's a uh, signal and echo. Okay, so no matter how I feel, eight wires left for one shelf. Okay, so <coughs> how did I solve this problem? <coughs> so I had to go and make sure that it worked first. And basically that was the problem that you get with 56 wires uh, to try and make sure that your 14 ultrasonic sensors will work. And that was quite a nightmare. So obviously we can't actually leave this at the back of the shelf. That was uh, the biggest problem I had. <coughs> okay, so the solution was to make a custom circuit board. DIY circuit board. Yeah, everyone knows about. Okay, for those who do not know, I'm the DIY circuit board man. <laughs> okay. So with this, what I use is that I use an Ethernet cable. Ethernet cable has exactly eight wires. So this will make it into one single wire and then two more here for VCC and ground one Ethernet cable and then 16 your 16 wires from the ultrasonic sensor will go in so in the end I only need to bring two wires <coughs> down into the Arduino the main controller and then on the Arduino we will have the second uh, DIY circuit board which brings in four Ethernet cables and lock everything into the Mega so from just now that this bunch here, I'm able to make it into that. Because I can make custom circuit boards. So all of you should make custom circuit boards. <laughs> <laughs> That's your next <laughs> <laughs> okay, So yeah, I, actually I, I really want to bring this board because I've solved so many, so many problems because I could make uh, DIY circuit boards. Something like this is a very, is a very big example. All right. <coughs> so then next came the problem of the software. So um, <coughs> the software, there was a bit of, when I was doing the prototype, uh, there was one thing that I noticed about ultrasonic <coughs> sensors. This thing is, um, is cheap, right? It's like, what, $2? So you can't expect them to be super duper reliable. And the problem that there were, they would give suddenly wrong readings. So my prototype, when I was doing the prototype, it was sensing correctly, then all of a sudden, it'll give you a wrong value, then it'll be correct again. Um, that was when I realized that they can sometimes give you a spike and just a wrong value out of nowhere. So out of 10 values, sometimes they give you nine correct and one is wrong. So if you are unlucky, you take the wrong value, you get a wrong reading on number of boxes. Okay, and so my, the, the logic of my software was that uh, first you calibrate each sensor to the height of the shelf because the shelf 
is made to a certain height but the sensor will read a, a different height it's never correct so you take the height that the sensor reads minus off what is the theoretical height of the shell and that gives you an offset okay, so this every single sensor has a different offset and this has to be stored in the EEPROM so when the Arduino boots up it will, it will read in all these different uh, offset values okay? and you cannot depend on one reading so <coughs> what I did in the end was that every time I read the ultrasonic sensor I read five values okay? I take the, the maximum and the minimum value and it's maximum minus minimum is less than a certain threshold I know that they are all about the same reading and this, this, uh, and this reading is accurate if I have a sudden spike, right, that means the, trash, the maximum minus minimum will give you a very big difference. And that tells you that, okay, these five readings, uh, one of them is wrong, let's redo the, the reading again. Okay. And the other thing was that I, I uh, realized that I should not actually measure the top of the box. Okay. At first I thought I measured the top of the box, which is here. Okay. What? I later, later on, what I did was that I measured the center of the box. So I know the height of the box, so I take top of the box minus height of box divided by 2. And then I have a threshold which means that if it's slightly more or slightly less, that is the correct. Because if you, if you take the top, right, you don't actually compensate for both directions. But you take the center, you can compensate for both directions. So this was the logic that I did in the end. And this works actually very well with the um, in the end. So far, I've not really got a wrong reading yet. So, I have a question. So, I mean, how do you read the center of the box to the ultrasound? I mean, it will be reflected by the top of the thing, right? It's not like you can take that off. Yeah, how do, you, how do you get the ultrasound waves to? No, no, you, you, you take the height of the box, you take the top, you read the top value, and then you minus off the height of the box divided by 2. Okay, but then there's just, I mean... It's, it's just a theoretical, it's, it's theoretically it's supposed to read uh, the center, not, you're not really actually reading the center. But that causes the thing to read, I mean, if, if you're really just measuring the top, how does she think that, you know, if you're pressing the five constant, you could you could also take the top and put two threshold on the top and bottom, but I I found that having it this way was easier to understand for me. Yeah, so it's what you're saying is yeah you can also use the top and then you have a threshold top and bottom. It will also work. Yeah. Oh, sorry. What's the accuracy of the sensor? Um, by right, uh, they say less than one m m. I'm not wrong. By left, no. <laughs> yeah, so so it's um, I found that anything lesser than this height, right, is can be a bit difficult to really maintain a good. If your box is very thick, right, it's very easy. You sure get it on. But if your box is this is probably the minimum that you can go. You know, like half of this is very difficult to get a correct reading every time. Okay, so then you have the I O. So of course you have all these sensor readings coming in. You know what is all your stock level of. You need to put it somewhere, right? So that's when uh, I o that's when I came out the IoT concept. So <coughs> another custom circuit board here, putting the ESP8266 on it. So this will send it up into the cloud, and from there I am able to know how much stock I have real time. So this cu this custom circuit board basically just uh, this gives you the power to all the 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 ultrasonic sensors, and then. Uh, one regulator to bring it down to 3.3 volts for the ESP8266 and then a couple of LEDs for your debugging purpose so I know what the shelf is actually doing. Okay, So in the end this is actually how it works. So the IoT shelf and the ESP8266 reads everything, goes up into DigitalOcean. Uh, I use a PHP script to actually pull in the, the values. It updates the MySQL database and then I have another web app that actually pulls it from the MySQL database and I'm able to see how much stock I have. Okay. Okay, so <coughs> this is the finished product. It's actually quite big, it's about 
this high. So we have six shelves at the bottom and uh, eight shelves at the top, total of 14. This is the back. This is actually how I mount it on. And this is the inside of it. With uh, like here we have uh, six boxes of paper. <coughs> Yeah. Ah uh, no, that's why um you maximum you put ten. You will not you should not hit it. And <laughs> not so easy. Because um because when you actually if you carry ten of this, it's already almost ten kg. So you this you will you will you typically you are carry and straight away you put it on the shelf and you push it in. Can you show up? There was um, does the exact number matter? Hmm? Would it not be enough to know that the given shelf was below fifteen percent or below fifteen percent of its Oh no, the the number matters. Um, yeah, because we because we sell by boxes. If let's say a person wants one box, we need to be sure that there is one box there to be sold. Yeah, and these papers are quite expensive, so everyone counts. Yeah, but I mean, if you've got an accurate calibration of what the bottom of the shelf looks like. Sorry. If you've got an accurate read on what the bottom of the shelf looks like, you can get a calibration Yeah. Um, you're not going to get that wrong. If you're reading, we can put a virtual Sorry, I don't quite get your. It, is, it doesn't seem like you've ever been in a situation where you thought you had stopped it. Where I had stopped and I did not have. When you thought you had stopped and you didn't have. Not, not really clear you, you might be off by like one box. Yeah, it's, it's, you won't be off by more than one box usually, but it can be a big factor for, 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 for us if we are off by one box, because it's like the, the ordered five boxes, we check there's five boxes, but in the end, if there was four, then we'll be in trouble, yeah. How are you making the PCBs? Just other set of carry chloride is not easily available on this. Well, that is a very long answer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you have a video. Check, check the previous yeah. video. It's yeah. Just like you. yeah, I actually gave a talk on that before. Yeah, or you can find me later like, again. I'll tell you. Or you can go to my blog. Um, if you go to... <coughs> um, yeah, so over somewhere at the bottom. Over here, we can have the. I do have a guide on it, um, I will just show you. The last one is that this is actually where everything goes. <coughs> so, all the different stock. If you look over here, it will tell you on the shelf how many in the warehouse, how many. You have. You you were saying that the boxes are a little bit. You know, different, I guess, presumably because when they pack them, they don't they close mm. properly before they're all completely the same. But yeah. do they weigh the same? They're all the same no, weight? They're not the weight, same weight. So, because some of them have 50 sheets, some of them have 100 sheets. But each, but the same product has got a known weight, right? No, no. Because different, each one of these. Same package. Oh, the same package, yes. Well, it should, right? Maybe. Yeah. So, that's. I know the, the number one question everyone asks me is why don't I use a weight sensor? Uh, I found that it's actually more difficult to mount a weight sensor. It seems that would have the uh, added benefit that you know your supplier is shortchanging you. T boxes. Yeah. Yeah. So far, no. <laughs> Thankfully, yeah. <coughs> so, given that firing was such a big endeavor of this. Uh, if I understand it right, the way this works is that you apply either a positive or zero to the uh, trigger, and then you get back positive or zero on the echo thing, right? So couldn't you fan out all the trigger means instead of, you know, instead of connecting the trigger pin on each sensor directly? 
you, you're saying trigger all of them at the same time, yes. is it? You, you still have 56 wires. You still have to have one pin in there. You still have, you still have the same number of wires. For, for me, um, what I'm going to improve in the next version is that instead of using an Arduino Mega, which was a shortcut way for me, that I will use multiplexers in the, in the next version to reduce the number of uh, uh, pins that I need from the microcontroller. Yeah. But in, in terms of that, you still need each, each uh, ultrasonic still needs to have one wire go in for a trigger. Yeah. Right, so you don't need to connect them to the microcontroller. You, st you still. Well, I mean, <coughs> okay, yeah. I think we can discuss the yeah. intricacies <laughs> later. Yeah, you can um, catch up with Leon at the end of the session. Yeah, uh, this is just my contact info. So